Welcome to the Voxel Developer Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to discuss how to connect your Voxel or Voxel 2 to QGround Control over Wi-Fi. I'm going to assume that you have already followed the sections on setting up your Voxel in soft AP mode. As you can see, I now have my laptop connected to Voxel's uh, SSID and I have QGround Control installed as per the last section. Now, I'm simply going to open QGround Control and then we will see that it connects automatically. It is that easy. However, there is a bit more subtlety and some more settings that we can play with. Let's start by investigating why this worked out of the box. So, I'm going to open a terminal and ADB into Voxel and we will see that Voxel has its 192.168.8.1 address. We'll also see that my laptop has the 192.168.10 address. That is the first IP address that's assigned to anything connecting to Voxel's uh, soft AP network. Now, the reason why QGround Control connects automatically is because of Voxel Mavlink Server. So if we open the uh, Voxel Mavlink Server config file, we will see that it's set up by default out of the box to automatically send Mavlink data to both the 8.10 and 8.11 IP addresses. This means that the first two laptops or desktops that connect to Voxel's soft AP network will automatically connect to QGround Control. This assumes a couple of things. One, it assumes that Voxel PX4 is running and that Voxel Mavlix server is running. Uh, we can inspect both of these by running Voxel Inspect Services. And we will see that since this is a Starling V2 with an out-of-the-box configuration, we have Voxel PX4 is running. We also have um, Voxel Streamer is running and Voxel Mavcam Manager is running along with Voxel Mavlink Server. To get simple telemetry back and forth to QGround Control, you do need Voxel Mavlink Server to be running and of course Voxel PX4 uh, on a Voxel 2 or Voxel 2 Mini. Uh, if you're using an external flight controller, obviously this will not pertain to you and uh, you'll need to follow the instructions for configuring Voxel Mavlink server to communicate over a UART port to a external flight controller. Voxel Mavcam Manager is an extra service which feeds into the Mavlink data going to the ground control station informing QGround Control to look for the RTSP video stream that's provided by Voxel Streamer. Now, there are a few tools on board Voxel to investigate the Mavlink traffic. Um, Voxel Inspect Mavlink is what we're going to use today. And after typing Voxel Inspect Mavlink, if you double tap Tab, you will see that it will automatically list out all of the Mavlink pipes which are available for debugging. Mavlink onboard is the data coming from PX4 for onboard services like Voxel Vision Hub to use. However, we can also look at Mavlink to GCS and Mavlink from GCS to inspect the Mavlink data that's going to and from a ground control station like QGround Control. So here we're going to look at Mavlink to GCS and see that we have the normal PX4 data rates uh, going to a ground control station. So we see the 1 hertz heartbeat, we see um, 15 hertz attitude, that's what gives us the nice smooth um, attitude readout in the top right corner. And we also see um, the remote ID, open drone ID location being uh, sent to the ground control station. Now we can, just for fun, look at Mavlink from GCS and see that QGround Control really sends very little over. Um, 
we can trick it into sending some more things by, let's say, taking a snapshot. So if I click the Take Snapshot button, we will see that Voxel received a command, and that was the command to take a picture. Now, let's look at some other ways to connect uh, Voxel and QGround Control. The way that we've currently done is the first of two options, and that was to tell Voxel what the IP address of the ground control station was. And so that we did in this file. Something that you will often want to do is set the secondary uh, ground control station IP to be whatever your desktop comes at, at on your uh, work or home network. And so uh, let's find out what my laptop's IP address is on the other network. So I'm going to disconnect now from Voxel's network and I'm going to go over to our uh, demo bootcamp network here. And then I'm going to have Voxel do the same thing. So let's open another ADB shell window and I'm going to run Voxel Wi-Fi and I'm going to connect in station mode to the bootcamp network with the password hello voxel all right and um, while that's connecting over the next few seconds I'm going to look at my laptop's IP address by running IP address and we will see that my laptop is at the 0 0.124 IP address so I'm going to program Voxel now to always transmit to that address. Okay, so now we type my laptop's IP address into the etc modal AI voxel mavlink server .config file. Um, I like the auto connect functionality on soft AP mode, and so I usually leave this primary GCS IP alone, and then I program the other IP address when using a different network into the secondary. You can obviously set both of these um, to be whatever you want and you can even have uh, multiple desktops connected at once with this method. So now I'm going to save that file and then we'll check voxel my IP to see that indeed voxel has now connected to the other Wi-Fi network and has received the .1.20 IP address. Now we're going to want to restart Voxel Mavlink server uh, so that it picks up the new config file change. So for this I can do systemctl restart Voxel Mavlink server. And now you'll see QGround Control just reconnected. So. So far we have only told Voxel to start transmitting to the ground control station. Let's try something else. So I'm intentionally going to set that IP address to something wrong now. So with the same method we just used, I'm going to put this back to something else. So now I'm just going to have this back at the old setup with the 8.11 address. Save and restart Mavlink server. We're going to close QGround control. And now, let's restart again just to be sure there was no latent memory in QGround control since we shut it down afterwards. Now we're going to open QGround control back up again. And we'll see we have no connection. And instead, I'm going to tell QGround Control how to connect to Voxel. So for this we're going to open Application Settings, go into Comlinks, and then we're going to add a new link into QGround Control's config. I'm going to call this 20, because Voxel was at 192.168.1.20. So I'm going to type that in here. We're going to hit Add Server. Make sure that you always hit Add Server. Uh, and the, the remove button appears otherwise it won't remember and then make sure that the type is set as UDP 
I typically do not select automatically connect on start because I have many devices throughout the office and I don't want multiple devices connecting to one ground control station. And so I will leave that turned off, save it, and then every time I want to connect to a drone, I have to manually go back to this menu, select the device that I want to connect to, the button will turn yellow, and then I click the connect button at the bottom. And then when we go back, we will see that QGround Control has now initialized the connection, and off we go. So you can choose which method that you prefer. It often depends on if you have many drones in one co ground control station or if you have many computers and only one development drone. It's really up to you which method you use. Thank you. That's the end of the video.